I'm going to go ahead and get started. <laughs> um, so my name is Allie Whitworth. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my husband's back there with my little baby. Um, but he may make some noise. Um, I am, so I now currently am a stay-at-home mom, but um, before this, I was the creative producer at Bethel Music. I worked in the label, um, and I've been working there since 2014, so a little while, um, and it was really great. Um, I love it. I miss it a lot. Um, but it's pretty hard to do that role and stay and be a mom, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but anyways, that's kind of it. I, we came from, uh, my husband and I came from IHOP before we went out to Bethel. We moved mostly for him, um, because he was offered a job out there. So anyways, um, but I love this stuff. I love being a part of the creative in the church and I love, um, I, just to clarify, I definitely don't do like <laughs> graphic design or anything like that. All of the people who were on my team did that stuff. Um, I just got the wonderful privilege of helping lead those people. Um, but anyways, I did want to ask, uh, how many of you do this like for your job? How many of you, like it's part of your job to run creative or do shoots or whatever that looks like? Great. And then how many of you do it for your church? Yes, <laughs> so in some way. Um, okay, great. I was just wondering. Um, so uh, for team collaboration and creative execution, um, there is so much <laughs> that goes into it, especially when you're working with creatives. Um, I consider myself a creative as well, but um, I think the people who like are creating those actual visuals. I always call them the creatives. <laughs> um, but um, it's really fun to get to be a part of the um, team that actually creates those visuals. And something I've learned along the way is um, there's a lot of emotion that goes into creating. And a lot of that actually affects um, your team dynamics, especially because so much of creating has you have to be vulnerable to create. And when you're doing that with people, that means you have to be vulnerable with people. And that can be messy and it can be scary. Um, but I really love it. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to just start a little bit about um, just some of the practicals of creative execution. Um, when, you know, I'm gonna talk kind of in terms of like a video shoot or photo shoot just because that's kind of primarily what I put my hands to, but I believe it can be kind of applicable to a lot of things. Um, but for Bethel Music, um, we when we approach an album, um, there's hundreds of assets we have to create. Um, posts, videos for radio, videos for you know, obviously social media, or whether it's promos or interviews, um, photos for the artwork, or, you know, there's a variety of things. Um, and when we're given that <laughs> wonderful task, um, we are given one set budget, and um, we have a certain number of team members that we're allowed to use per project. And um, there's just a lot of... <laughs> Uh, details that go into it. Um, but the thing that I've found most important is actually um, when, before you're going into like a shoot or your like few days of creating, um, it's so important not to just jump into like prepping for it a week before. Like I would prep for it like a month out or I mean a month actually is very... <laughs> That's stressful, but um, it probably ideally would be three to six months, depending on the size of the project. Um, there's so much that um, there's so much importance in preparing for a shoot when you're devoting days to creating. Um, if you're not prepared when going into those days, there's so much that you can miss. Um, and there's such a swirl you can get into because you don't have this foundation of a schedule or foundation of like your budget itemized. And um, 
really preparing is actually what kind of lays the foundation for you to actually be creative. And the preparing side is actually less fun. Um, you know, I'm, it's more having to do with um, getting the exact details of a schedule. Like, when I create a schedule, I make sure I have, like, down to you're going to eat from this time to this time, and we're going to capture this post for 15 minutes. We're going to capture this video for five minutes, this part of a video for whatever. And it kind of goes into those details, which if you all would like to hear, I can go into more. But um, I think if you don't get as prepared and organized as you can before a shoot, you're going to pay for it in the long run, whether that is you look back and you didn't get everything you need, what your original vision was didn't actually come through, or, um, or you realize <laughs> that you missed it, and you're going to end up having to go over your, what budget you had because you have to go back and capture. And that's really hard to do, um, especially when you've been, if you're like commissioned by your church to do this, and they like, they're like, we have $3,000. That's all we can give you, and you've got all these like grand ideas and um, a wonderful team that's got all these ideas, and so you try to pull this off, and um, when you hit a point of going under over budget, it's kind of dishonoring. Um, I say that. I've gone over budget, <laughs> but, um, but it's, it can be dishonoring to the people who've like commissioned you, and um, that's why it's so important to really like make sure you're prepared in that way. Um, and then on top of that, being prepared with your schedule and your budget is um, really important, actually, for your team um, and for yourself when you're on when you're actually going into creating um, during those few days. Because if you don't have that all laid out and prepared, your headspace is going to be filled with trying to figure out a schedule or trying to figure out: Do I have money to say yes for us to leave for an hour to go do this new idea that just came up? Um, or to go buy flowers for something. <laughs> um, if you don't know exactly in those moments, then um, it's just going to create chaos in your mind. And having chaos in your mind when you're creating is, it just, I feel like it really squashes what you're actually capable of doing and what your team's capable of doing. Um, if there's not the space of like, you've thought everything through, you've prepared, when a problem comes up or when you're, um, <laughs> let's say you have like prepared and you say, I have an example. On um, Josh Baldwin's shoot, we went to the White Sands um, and we had prepared for it for five months or so. <laughs> and um, this was my first like big shoot um, where I was kind of like leading as producer. And... Um, the our team at home, our creative director, um, and our CEO, they were kind of like sending us off with this vision. We were gonna capture this beautiful like landscape thing in this white in the white sands with these horses. We were gonna have like five to ten horses. And I had like worked it all out. We had it figured out um, and everything was prepped. And then the first day we get there, and these horses were literally the like they were the center of everything. Like, the landscape was beautiful, but the horses were the story. And um, when we get there, <laughs> we realize that there was um, the, they actually call him the Wrangler. The Wrangler, who was giving us these horses, he was actually breaking the law, and we found out through the um, National Park people that were there that he, they had actually been on the hunt for this guy. And they were like, oh, you have contact with him. We need you to, like, we need you to give us your contact. We're trying to catch him. And quickly we realized these horses weren't going to work out. And we had just, like, spent, we went, like, all in. All of our budget was it given to these. We had three days in the White Sands, and that's all we had. And, um, and we were sent off by our leaders, like, this is the plan. And it was, like, it was great. I mean, I loved it. Um, but then all of a sudden it was me. Uh, two videographers, um, our graphic designer, who was also kind of our like visual art director, um, and our audio guy, who's just just five of us, and Josh, um, and we were kind of left there to try to like figure out what to do, um, and we had to 
basically, we had to come up with a story um, that had to do with just the landscape. And um, it was pretty wild because <laughs> I, I remember when we were like sitting down talking, realizing it wasn't going to work. Um, if I hadn't have prepared, even though like my now schedule was like out the door, if I hadn't have prepared for it, I, there's no way I could have actually pulled off creating a new plan because I was so in touch, not just me, like my, the rest of my team was as well. We were so in touch with what we needed to pull off, like the number of assets we needed, how we were going to get it, that we were able to actually like, when we came up with the new plan, actually fill the spaces that we now had to change. And, um, and honestly, it was one of my most favorite things to ever be a part of. I remember, um, you know, when you can just feel God's on something, even though it is like, it makes zero sense. Whenever the horses didn't work out, something felt right about it. And so we just kind of like waited <laughs> and we kind of came up with these plans and we really just followed where our peace was. And um, we kind of just leaned into feeling peace on kind of focusing on acoustic videos. And then the big thing we were going to do is our first music, it was our Bethel Music's first music video. And um, um, it was to a song that I love, the song Abraham, that was almost eight minutes long, which is very long for a video, especially when the horses are at the center. And now we only have Josh and really pretty white sands. Um, but I remember we were, we kind of came together as a team and we were like, <laughs> kind of <laughs> didn't know what to do, but we just felt something right. And so we kept feeling like, let's just follow where we feel peace. Let's just follow that because that's kind of been the only thing that's felt consistent. Um, and I remember the very last day we'd captured like beautiful acoustic videos. Um, and I'm not kidding you. The days that were there, um, like the sunrises and sunsets, each of them were so uniquely different, which was so what we needed. Because um, visually, it was so easy to get very boring. <laughs> um, but the last day we were there, we knew there was something we were missing. Like every, we were like, everybody's gonna be tired of just seeing like this pretty sky. And um, all, all of a sudden, <laughs> we were like standing around. We decided to pray and. Um, we were talking about just dropping doing the music video and going back to the team and being like it didn't work. And um, when we were praying, all of a sudden we felt this like strong move from the Holy Spirit of like someone is going to get saved from this Abraham video. That's like all we felt, all we knew. And so we were like, okay, <laughs> like what do I do with, <laughs> with that? Like, I, we still have to create something. I don't know what to do. Um, and within that same time, all of a sudden this, like the wind starts picking up and there's this crazy sandstorm that comes through painful <laughs> found out, but, um, cause it was like, I mean, the winds were like 40, 50 miles per hour and sands like hitting you in the face. Um, but we basically, there was just this like crazy sandstorm that came through and all of a sudden we decided, let's just film this. Let's film what's happening. Josh, <laughs> tough it out, walk through the sand. And as we were filming, um, it was crazy the way it happened. There was just this, like, it was like the, like, in the song as it would grow, every time there was this, like, whirlwind of, like, sand that would kind of, like, come up and go around Josh or something was happening. And it started to feel like we were following what God wanted us to do. And which is so wild. I would do that every time if I could. <laughs> um, uh, I try to do it every time. But um, at the end of it, I remember us all like, kind of taking a step back, and we realized like, if we hadn't have, like, been as prepared as we were, and if we hadn't have come together in the way that we did, there's no way we would have seen what he was doing. Um, and I think that, you know, it's very, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are very detailed oriented, um, I would hope. Um, and it's easy to go into like what it takes to pull something like that off. Um, but there's just so much importance on putting the value in preparing, but then also holding your hands open as soon as you're there. Um, even when something doesn't go wrong, even when, you know, you still have horses line up. Um, 
still holding your hands open and like following where peace is. Um, I strongly, strongly believe that God's moving in a new way. And I strongly believe it's through the arts and through music. And um, I strongly believe that people are going to be healed when they see a graphic. They're going to be healed when they see a video or whatever. So I, God's going to do the impossible through the arts. And um, I think there's such an importance on listening to him as a creative um, because... He wants to move in a new way, and I don't think we've seen all that he will do through us. Um, And, hold on, there was something I wanted to say about that. Um, Yeah, when our work is expressing God through creativity, the most important thing to remember is that God cares more about what we're doing than we do. Um, He wants to move through us, and he wants to work through us, even down to the details even down to, like, what, where we're going to stay. Like, I remember we had to, um, <laughs> Corey shoot. We had um, this whole thing lined up. I'm not kidding, guys. Every time we've, like, approached a shoot, something happens. Like, something goes wrong. <laughs> um, and to me, it's just confirming even more of, like, what God wants. Like, God's doing something, and the enemy's afraid of it. And so there's, like, things that pop up that you just have to solve. Um, but I remember when we arrived for Corey's shoot, we were in Ashland, Oregon, and we arrived at our Airbnb. And um, it's we had planned filming everything in this Airbnb area. It was, like, attached to this really great land and had these, like, really pretty trees. <laughs> um, and as soon as we get there, it I... Like, not just myself. Me and the team, there was the creepiest vibes we were getting from this place. And, like, the more, the longer we stayed there, the more and more we were like, this is not, we can't be here. And we'd been there for 45 minutes, and I just paused. Everyone was kind of, like, unloading stuff, but unsure. And it was, like, a few hours before Corey got there, and Gabriel was with him, um, his son. And I was kind of sensitive to that um, as well just because I know the importance of environments. Um, (laughs) Anyways, um, but I remember I paused. I kind of just, like, took a minute and stepped away from the team, and I was like, I just need to sit for a second. And I sat, and I just asked the Holy Spirit. I was like, Lord, are we supposed to stay here? And I've never heard so clearly, get out. Like, I heard him say, get out. I was like, okay, all right, we're leaving. And so I just had everybody pack everything up. And as we're driving into town, 10 minutes later, we found a different Airbnb, Um, an hour later, we found the new spot we were filming, um, and, like, another hour, we had everything fall back into place, and it was better than what we had planned, um, and, you know, it's just crazy, stuff like that is always happening, um, but yeah, I think there's, I think there's so much, and we've seen, like, since then, like, from those videos and stuff, we, we go through the comments and we read, and we've seen God's doing stuff through them. And um, it's not just the big stuff you hear about on stage. Um, it's little stuff that we're seeing God do. Um, and it's amazing. So what you do is important. Like, the creativity that comes from inside of you is actually, God wants to use it. Um, he wants to use your art. He wants to use your ideas. Um, on top of that, <laughs> um, what's beautiful as well is I think he wants us to do it together. I think he wants us to, to do it as a team. Um, there, one of the things I loved about kind of leading this like group of five people is everyone was so individually creative um, and very different in their like styles, like which was beautiful. <laughs> when it came to coming together, it's not as easy. Um, but I remember there was this one time with our, our graphic designer. We, um, it was kind of like he had created the original vision for, um, what was it? What shoot was it? I think it was Josh's shoot again. He had created the original vision. Oh, no, Brian and Jen's. Uh, Brian and Jen shoots. He created the original vision for it, and um, all of a sudden it started changing, and 
it was right changes. Like, we could feel that it was right, but he was, like, panicking a little because his name was attached to it. Like, this is, like, people are going to think I'm creating this. <laughs> um, he kind of started to panic, and I remember having a conversation with him and um, realized that it, like, actually came down to he was uh, afraid that if it didn't look the way he wanted it to, then his, like, value was less than people were. He was afraid of what people would think, essentially. Um, and we kind of started talking a little bit, and then he realized that there's, so, or, well, <laughs> um, he kind of, like, we realized there was, like, a confrontation with a different designer that was there as well, and he realized that actually all of that, like, insecurity was kind of stemming from that, and so they... They kind of came together, had a conversation, and there was a resolve, <laughs> which was great. Um, and then all of a sudden, there was like, once that was out of the way, it was like all of a sudden they valued each other. And the shoot, what it became, was better than what we thought originally. Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy how, like, it seems like every time you go into a shoot, you're like, you think you have it all figured out. And then God does something, and then it's better than you, <laughs> you could have ever done. And I think it just confirms even more, like, how God's wanting to move through us and how it's actually not us. It's, like, his glory, his design, his art. Like, he's wanting to use us. Um, and it's not just about giving people a good feeling or encouragement, um, which is great, um, but he really is wanting to do miracles, and I really believe there's a new wave coming, and I think he wants to do it through art. Um, and I've seen him do it through art. Um, I think something else, um, I remember when I was growing up, um, my mom always told me, um, <laughs> God never withholds a good thing from us. He never withholds a good thing. And I like always just kind of like knew that. So I never doubted it. And um, uh, when it came to our team, I, when I first kind of stepped into this role, I was very insecure and very like, I'm not qualified. Like I worked at a retail store before this. And then I've just kind of been helping since. Like, why are you lead, like putting me in this, like over these other people who are like, I don't even know how to describe like what white balance is or like Adobe is a thing, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, um, and I remember just feeling so insecure and um, I heard the Lord so clearly just be like, hey, I'm not withholding a good thing from you and I'm not withholding a good thing from them. And, um, and then I kind of just like settled into that and I realized like there's every like scenario you go into when you're creating God's, like, fully prepared you, even if you're facing fear, even if you're facing whatever it is, like, disconnection with your team or whatever. All the people that are there, God wanted there. He wants those people there. And as soon as you start, like, realizing the value of that and how each person, no matter their qualification, no matter if they came from L.A. and they're this, like, great designer or they came from some town you've never heard of, and they, this is their first designing job, their value is equal. And there's a reason God put them there. And um, I think that's really important in team collaboration. Um, when you're creating together, to, not, to know that each person's voice is actually valuable um, and each idea is valuable, though every idea won't be used. That's not realistic. <laughs> um, it's important to like, actually listen and come together and like, bring in everybody to make idea or to like create because if you leave out the person who's just afraid to say something because they don't feel qualified, they may be holding the key to like opening exactly what you needed for your creative project. Um, and yeah, your team needs to understand that there is equal value among everyone. It doesn't mean that there aren't roles or that someone doesn't know, or that, like, if somebody who doesn't know how to use a camera is like, I feel like I'm supposed to be filming this. You don't give that. <laughs> That's not what you do. But you definitely listen to whatever it is they come up with. Like, um, on the Josh shoot, whenever we were, like, all talking about what to do, our audio guy, who never 
not intentionally, he just never speaks into our creative stuff. Um, it was his idea to like really focus on our acoustic videos. And they ended up being like my favorite thing <laughs> that we've done. Um, but it's just because we all of a sudden came together and we're like, even though we have like different roles and like, yes, I'm over you, whatever, like our voice is valued and our voice is equal in this scenario. I think that's really important when you're creating because if somebody's in your group that doesn't feel like they belong there, then they're never going to say anything and you'll never find out what they're actually capable of. And, um, and that's really important too when you're working with creatives because I think a lot of times the people who are you know, creative are really in touch with their emotions and a lot of time have a lot of insecurities. And um, if you don't like come together and be vulnerable, <laughs> then I don't think you'll ever really reach your full potential. Um, there's um, this verse that I love, and it's from the Passion Translation, which is also amazing, but it's Ephesians 2.10. Um, it says, we have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Um, I love that verse because I feel like it just really solidifies how he's wanting to use us um, through creativity. He's called us our, our like, he's called us his poetry. Um, so yeah, I think he's speaking and um, yeah, he wants to use us and he wants us to do it together. And I believe and I want for the church to be the next creative movement. I want the world to look at the church and be like, oh, look what they're doing. They're awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I wanted to open up some, for some questions. Um, I'd love to answer anything, if anybody has any. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, it depends on the budget. So, which depends on the project. Um, never enough people is the answer. Um, we, as standards, probably about five people. Um, somebody operating in the producer role, um, and then a. DP, uh, who also can be the creative director, um, and then we like to have, um, just because of the way it functions with our team, um, our art director, he um, also happens to be a photographer, so that works out really nice, so we use him as our photographer, but he also is kind of like a lead director there, um, and then an audio person, and one other camera person, and then the artist or whoever is there, um, or talent. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely never enough, but usually it comes down to budget. We would love to have more, um, <laughs> but, and also, you know, we, we have, we never are just capturing one acoustic video. Um, we are given, you know, the this one budget, which usually comes down to, okay, we have to spend it all during these three days because we have to rent gear for whatever and we only have three days. And that means we have to capture everything. <laughs> and so um, we're always capturing more than just one thing. Um, but yeah, that's about, that's about it. Um, and, and not everyone's like, oh, I'm only touching a camera. It's like everyone's actually coming together and like just doing everything to pull it off. Um, and being like proactive and helping. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, from the original thought mm -hmm. of, okay, we're gonna take this video or this song and make it into a music video. Yeah. Um, do you have like an efficient general step by step process for what you're gonna do first up until um, yeah. like you're actually there shooting mm -hmm. the video? Yeah, um, we always try to. Um, 
there, that's kind of actually been an ever changing process. <laughs> um, and actually what I found is actually, it kind of is always dependent on who our um, main like artist is. Um, some artists want to be way more involved or like whoever's vision it is, you know, whether it's, you could apply it to a pastor or whoever. Um, depending on their level of involvement, that kind of affects the process. Um, because if they're the ones that gave the vision and they like want to see it through, then they need to be really involved through the process, especially because usually this conversation happens six months out of it actually happening. And it's so easy when you have, you know, you're given the team here is like, Hey, this is the vision. Da, 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 da. And then you have like six creatives that are like, yeah, there's like all these different ways we could go. And by the end they come back. If it's a person who's like super wanting to be disconnected, they come back. Most likely it's not anything like the vision they had originally had in plan or in store. Um, but so that is a huge factor is whoever is giving this vision, they really need to be involved. And if they can't be involved, then there needs to be the trust to the team that they will like, accomplish kind of the heart of the vision. So not necessarily like the look or orange versus purple. Um, they, that's kind of actually something that when it came to the vision that I, as a producer, kind of took on as my responsibility to help like guide the creatives and just be a reminding voice of like, hey, remember this is originally what they said, is this new idea accomplishing that? Um, you know, so it's hard to give you like an exact, like this is exactly what we do because it constantly is changing. Um, but we did always have check-ins. Like um, our team would kind of like do, hear the vision, kind of do like two to three brainstorming meetings. Um, usually the uh, art director would go off and kind of create one to three major ideas. Um, it was usually only over one if it was very clear what the vision was. Um, and then we kind of come back and that's when we would meet, meet with the original, like the stakeholder, so to speak. And, um, you know, find out if this is what they wanted or whatever. And so we'd have like probably two, depends on how much feedback you get, but it's lovely if it's just one meeting, they're like, yeah, that's it. And then we can kind of like go from there. But, um, once you kind of get that sign off of like, yes, this is the vision that we want and go for it, um, then it just becomes internally with our team, kind of like the practical details, finding out exactly what your video person needs, exactly what your uh, photo person needs. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the best answer I can give. Um, but yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of times creatives or even like worship or like artists in general, like volunteers could be whatever, there mm -hmm. can be a lot of leaning in and, and really emphasis on something that feels good or feels right, feels like right. the Lord. And then oftentimes we'll kind of put it in the hands of like, this is the preacher, the pastor, like, and thus say the Lord in the word, and then that's really like, yeah, that's, they know that stuff, but what I feel is good, what I feel like the Lord is leaning, like, yeah. how do you guys as a team, like, how do you just encourage, like, hey, like, you have something, like there's a, there's a passion, there's something, that, the intention the Lord gave you that, that, that you believe or think you can really inspire and still these things, but also what is rooted in the word, mm -hmm. it really is, you know, and like yeah. combine those two and not getting it one too far. So one's right. Like, I just you don't want it to get weird. Feel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, not, you know, like a marriage of like yeah. being an ability, but don't want feelings like control an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure I hear your question right. Are you saying like you, how do you keep like the team from going off into this like world of right? So like to not just feel to actually yeah to be to really rein in like no like yeah. yes you have this gift but but there's more than just like I feel yeah yeah, yeah. I really know what's what's rooted in something where it's like this is this yeah through this foundation like and it's let's let's build on that yeah. I think it's in that, I think it's really important that your, whoever's leading the team um, is really strong in that, <laughs> really strong in knowing, you know, like, um, one, what our goal is, like, what is our actual goal? We're not just creating anything. We actually have a purpose, and 
um, having somebody who's like very, very anchored in what that is. Um, and then I think it's really important as well to know that um, the Holy Spirit is equally like feel as much as he is practical. And I think it's just as, there's just as much wisdom in being like, I love what you're feeling, and this is great. I honor that, but this is actually what we're what we need to do. And we have three days; we can't change it right now. Um, and I honestly, I think that there's it's very clear in those moments when it is when the feels are right. It's very clear when it's right, um, and that doesn't mean you don't listen to all the feels, um, but. I think when your whole team understands that, like, hey, we're going to all communicate ideas, and not every idea is going to be taken. Not every feeling you're going to have is going to be taken. Um, I think it, like, if you view it as, you know, I think it's really easy to view, like, the emotional creative, like, they wouldn't understand practical, um, or they wouldn't understand you know, the structure, but that's actually not true. They may fight it, but that's, that's not true. And I think it's really wise to actually always just keep an open dialogue of like bringing them back (laughs) to, um, the practical. Um, and that was, I mean, my whole role was practical. Like I wasn't the one that was the creating person. (laughs) Like I was the one that was like, Hey, I love this idea. You have 30 minutes to do it, (laughs) which is great. And, um, I actually, I love boundaries for creative because I actually think it makes you more creative. Um, you know, I love that, you know, people will have this $10 million idea. That's yeah. Amazing. But you were given $5,000 and that's all you can do with it. Um, and the, you know, I, again, I think the Lord, the Lord knows your practicals. And I think if there's ever situations you run into and you don't know what, how to respond to a person or like guide the team, like back onto the right path. Um, I think it's really important that you just know that the Lord actually knows and he'll tell you, he'll tell you what to do. Um, you know, he doesn't like throw you out (laughs) there (laughs) to be by yourself. Is that kind of? Can I answer? Yeah. Can I mm-hmm. follow up with that too? Yeah. In, in that vein of what you're saying, or you know, you want to have that marriage of like yeah. practical and creative, then how do you, even as a leader, mm-hmm. um, how do you remain unoffendable and how do you also convey good points to people that you want them to be unoffendable as well? Totally. Like, I have to give this, like you have this much rope in a sense, or you yeah. want this, but we have this restriction. Yeah. And you're, everyone is remaining unoffendable. Yeah, I totally. So. I hear you. Um, it takes time. Um, and it takes building with a team, um, and it's probably going to be pretty bumpy at first. Um, I, I think what's important for you is, is to actually be as the, like the leader of the team is to kind of be settled in, you know, uh, if you under, like, if you're not going to let someone else's offense kind of offend you or affect you, um, I think that's really important to keep, like, your heart in. Because if you don't, if you're leading the team and you're, like, easily offended by if they aren't respecting you or they aren't whatever, yes, they could be in the wrong. But if you're, like, quickly, like, ugh, this person, like, they don't ever listen to me, um, that's not helping anything. And it's definitely not helping you. (laughs) And um, I think it's really important to, like, just constantly as the leader remind yourself of grace um if you feel an offense come up immediately deal with it um whether you find out if you need to talk to the person or if it's just internally if you need to like check yourself and then when it comes to the rest of the team and them kind of learning that same thing I think having the open dialogue of like being okay with being honest like hey I think that you're offended right now is that right and if they are, and they're like, hey, I just want to talk about that. Like, did I say something or did, you know, whatever. Just kind of bringing everything to light. Because if it's, like, you just dance around a fence, it's just going to get worse. And it's going to explode at some point. And it's way better to just immediately address it. Um, and often it's usually, like, something pretty minimal or some kind of misunderstanding that happened. 
um, that can be easily addressed. And sometimes it's something that you've done wrong. And it's so important to like be humble <laughs> about it and be like, yes, I'm so glad that we have this conversation or whatever. Please tell me if I do it again. Like, don't think that I'm like, I want to, if you have to change, I want to change or I want to do something. I think openness is huge in being able to like do this as a team. Um, cause so many emotions are involved in creating and, especially if you're coming together as a team and it's your job or whatever, you know, you're kind of like forced to work with these people. Um, you know, it's not necessarily happen, happening immediately out of friendship. Yeah. It's important to establish those like open lines of communication. So yeah. <laughs> Hello, yes. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. I know this wasn't a Bethel created project, yeah. but that the reckless love when they were on the sidewalk singing to that the homeless guy. Yes. So I know that wasn't that was not a Bethel Mm-mm. created project. Yeah. You know, but somehow that exploded that whole thing. Yeah. And so I mean, I guess if you could share a little bit about how yeah. that helped to catalyze yeah. what you guys were doing. Um, because I'm also trying to think of how do you when you have like zero budget. Yeah. How do you make something cool happen? Right. You know? <laughs> nope, I get it. Yeah. Um, well, that was nothing that we did to make that happen. <laughs> that was just the Lord. Um, we, I remember when our team first saw that video, like, we immediately felt, like, we were crying. <laughs> we immediately felt the Lord on it. If y'all don't know what it is, um, there's this video of this girl, I think, singing Reckless Love to a homeless person on the street, or it may have been a guy, I don't remember, but um, it was, like, heart-wrenching, like, this guy was crying, and you could tell the Lord was touching him, and it was a beautiful, beautiful video, I want to go watch it again now that you brought it up, Um, but immediately, I mean, when a moment like that happens, it was, I mean, it was, like, kind of no question, we were, like, we have to reshare this, like, we're being touched and we know that everybody else is going to be touched by this too. So you kind of, I think like when you see something like that happen, it's the Lord a lot at the time. Um, cause we couldn't have made that happen. Um, but we like could feel the Lord on it. So we were like, we need to get behind this because you know, whatever, you know, the Lord's using it. Um, and it's easy to like get into like, we're going to get so many likes and we're going to get so many, whatever. Um, and yeah, that did happen, but our purpose wasn't to grow the song. Our purpose was like, well, people are going to get encountered just by watching this video. Um, so that was a sweet little kiss from the Lord. Um, but the other side of that, when you have zero budget, um, that stuff, I think, I think the important thing to remember is like kind of immediately stepping back and like, it's great to ideate what you want to do and like find the vision of whatever it is um, and kind of get ideas out on the table. But then like after you've kind of like expressed ideas and more so focused, not necessarily like we're going to go to the top of this building and not necessarily the details, but like kind of the heart or the feel of what you want your project to be, um, whether it's like centered around I want it outside or I want it whatever in the street. <laughs> um, I think the immediately from that step, you actually step back and you look at what it is you have for your resources. Um, and if you have no money, then that means finding the people that are surrounded by you and who's willing to help. Um, and I believe that people will show up or like resources will start like pouring out once you kind of start looking. Um, but you have to be creative in that sense, too. Like, you you have to start thinking, like, out of the box of how to pull off something and just try things. Um, like, I, like, this is a random example, but for uh, our kids' project, you have to get, like, a thousand permits for working with kids. And they wanted to do this shoot, and I had, like, five days. Usually getting a permit takes over a month for just one. And I knew, like, everything in front of me was telling me it's impossible. (laughs) Like, initially, I was like, guys, we can't do this. This isn't realistic. Um, But I just tried. I, like, reached out 
and called one random office and happened to get like somebody who was really nice and they were like, yeah, I'll give you all these permits tomorrow. Um, and that's not normal. And I think it's really important to just don't let your restrictions hold you back from trying, even though you may not have what is immediately what you think you need. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. When you guys are going into a project and you're, you're stuck mm -hmm. as a team, how do you get out of that unstuck? Like creatively stuck? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of times that we've been given a project and we haven't been excited about it. Um, I mean, honestly, the kids' project is a great example. Um, our designer is, like, very, like, edgy, cool, whatever, hip, um, like, <laughs> everything non-kids. And he was the one that had to design the kids' album. So he was, like, really struggling with feeling inspired. Which one are you referring to? Um, the bright ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, and... So he was really struggling with how to, how to like actually f create like an inspiration behind it. Um, and what he had to do was like find the people who were inspired by it and actually spend time with those people. Um, and I think that really helped him like get unstuck and get out of the box. He also had to get all of his ideas out. Um, and that was kind of just him as the designer. Um, as a team, when we've been stuck... Um, <laughs> It honestly, it's come down to us like putting a lot of ideas out there. It's very easy to all of a sudden when you're stuck want to try to fix it. And so you want to try, you like find something that you kind of are like, yeah, that could work. And then you run off and then all of a sudden it's not feeling right, you know, and having to go back and whatever. I think those processes are really important because um, it kind of helps you find where you want to go. Um, but the important thing in getting unstuck is not like secluding yourself as a team, like not being like, let's all just not talk to each other. I think it's really important to come together, um, but come together intentionally, like tell your team like, hey, we're going to go step away, like take tomorrow to kind of come up with some ideas. Next day we're coming together and we're going to bring it all, like we're going to just talk about our ideas and kind of keep doing that until you find that spark or that, that thing that is right. And sometimes you're in situations where you may not ever feel that, like, oh, my heart's in this. <laughs> um, but your client or your stakeholder, pastor, whoever, if they're like, this is exactly what I want, you honor that. Um, and you kind of follow that. I think it's really important for you to feel the spark, um, but that doesn't always happen. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you keep your team, like, Healthy and uh -huh. to value oh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, yeah, personal responsibility is huge. Um, honest conversations. If you're the leader, I think having real honest conversations. Um, I don't know if your team, like, like when we would have a team, we'd, we'd have one-on-one -on -one connects you know, schedule them, like, routinely, like, twice a month or once a month, and um, in those connects, it was, like, we would write off, like, hey, these are, this is what you're doing great at, and then these are some areas where we think you could grow, and that's all very, like, work-focused, but um, probably, like, the last six months that I worked in, they start, worked there, they started adding in um, kind of emotional health stuff, um, like, addressing, like, <laughs> Uh, say you have somebody who, like, you can tell is just going down, like, a deep, dark hole. <laughs> and you know you know that it's, like, they, whether it's, like, they just need to get out of their head or something's not okay or something's not right. I think as their leader, just being like, hey, I've, I've noticed this about you. Like, are you okay? Like, are you feeling hurt? Like, I noticed you're kind of not really taking care of yourself, and that's nothing against you. I just want to know if you're okay. Um, I think when people hear that you care um, and they, that you, they're seen, <laughs> I think it does a whole lot for self-worth. Because um, really that, you know, when people aren't taking care of themselves, it's a self-worth issue. Self-worth issue. Yeah, I said that right. Um, 
And yeah, it's kind of, I mean, that kind of gets into the like whole emotional health world, but you touch on that in creative world anyways. So again, I think open communication is really important and not being afraid to like be somebody who can keep them accountable and not being afraid to like take that start, first step in the friendship or, you know, coworker relationship. Um, because if they, to be honest, if they keep going down this unhealthy path, eventually it's going to affect their work. And eventually they won't be able to be a part of it anymore. And if their goal is to like be this creative whatever, then you as their leader is to help them to meet their goal, you know? So I think that's really important too. Yeah. A couple, I like that question. A couple thoughts that I yeah. just had that were really practical that we recently started doing at the place that I work with. Mm-hmm. Somebody is like getting in a funk, or like I can tell you've just been really down the last couple days. Like if it's something where you're just like feeling burnt out, we'll just be like, just get out and go take like a 20, 30 minute walk. Yeah. Or at least there's like practical little yeah. things mm-hmm. to like prompt them. That mm-hmm. helps just like a breath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We started taking um, we called them laps <laughs> around the building. Like if we like um, kind of as our team. Just over time, we grew in, like, history with each other, so we could tell when something was wrong, you know? And so we'd just kind of, like, look at each other and be like, you need to walk. (laughs) And so you just, like, get up and walk and be like, hey, you need to just, like, unload and vent a little. Vent. Here's the place to do it. And I think it's really important, too, you know, like, whenever, say there's an issue with somebody, like, hey, this person said this thing, and I just am not doing good, da-da-da-da. Like, be accountable. Um, Bill says it so good, and I can't remember how Bill Johnson says it, but um, it's really important to be like, okay, like, hey, I'm going to connect with you next week, and by then, I, you need to talk to them. And when you see them in a week, be like, hey, did you talk to them? Like, how did it go? And kind of creating those kind of, like, accountability measures. or And that, that can even come with, like, <laughs> if they're not doing okay, you know, be like, hey, you need to spend some time with the Lord. And then, like actually addressing it again and as a leader it's important to remember those things you know um and that can like I like something I would do is you know like write in my notes like if there's something I needed to remember with one person like just a quick note about it so I could just jog my memory or whatever but yeah um so what you're kind of like talking about the health of the team obviously you as the leader need to be healthy Mm -hmm. um so what does that look like for you to recharge yeah Yeah. Um, well, I think, I mean, quiet time is obviously important. Um, but for me, I am an extrovert, so I recharge with people. <laughs> but I also work with people, like, 24-7. So um, uh, what was really important was actually, as a team, making sure that we had good moments and fun moments, too, that weren't just work. So laughter <laughs> is huge. Um, and being intentional about that. We would plan dinners where it's like, hey, everybody just come over for dinner and hang out. Um, No, like, agenda or anything. It was just like, we might play a game or whatever, Um, something very easy. Um, But that was really important, not just for the team, but for me as well. Um, Because I I think it's important as a leader to not just feel like you're, like, over these people, but to actually feel like you're, like, with them. Um, And that's really important when you're, like, on these creative shoots or whatever you're doing because if the team doesn't feel like you're an equal then you know they're way more hesitant to like work and create with you um but that was really important family time is huge um well I mean I guess the best way to describe it is really getting very intentional with your schedule like Tuesdays were always my day that I was like at after work I'm going straight home and I'm spending time with my husband um Mondays, always spending time with my, like, girlfriends. It was, like, you kind of have to get really intentional about what you need personally. If you're an introvert and you need specific kind of quiet time or specific kind of quality time with a certain person, whatever that is, you really have to take responsibility for it because it's so easy to just get caught up in the busyness and leave yourself behind, you know? Um, And I did not do that well. I learned that the hard way, (laughs) you know? It's like you... Yeah. And it can be this 
inspiring yeah. can be really awesome, but then it can also be like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't know how to bring structures to this. Like, yeah. what, do you have anything to say yeah. to speak into that? Um, yes, I do. <laughs> um, I think it's really, the thing that I would do when I was in those moments, which happen often, um, like when you're, there's like, especially when you're leading a team and everyone like is just, we had multiple projects going on at a time. So a lot of times we were working on these major things all over and it's so easy for it to overtake you. Um, I think what I found to be really important was, um, Actually, like, reminding myself, I would, <laughs> I would sit at my desk, um, and if I was feeling overwhelmed and I couldn't, like, actually settle my mind, I'd just start speaking in tongues. And just under my breath to myself, just kind of recenter my spirit. And that always quieted my mind. And I'd get to a quiet mind and then start from there. And then, like, work down. Then I'd, like, start making lists, and then from that list, it's kind of like I would edit my list. It's like I'd write down all of these ideas or all of these things that I felt like I was supposed to do and then pull out or just highlight the ones that I knew were priority, the ones that I knew were important, and um, started to take everything that was in my mind and actually put it to paper. And that was a huge help for me because it kind of immediately like removed the question of, like, I'm missing something, I'm not going to get everything done because I could see it right in front of me. Um, and that was really, that actually is like, it's simple. But that was like a really like helpful thing for me. Um, and then on top of that, knowing that because, are you the one that's kind of like leading and like kind of helping, being like the center of making th- everything happen? Yeah. Um, know that the Lord's with you in that. And he will give you creative ideas on how to pull everything off. Um, everything that it's so easy for your massive list to look impossible but we serve a God of the impossible and he cares about those things too Um, and if you start to remind yourself of that and then start to believe that you'll see him do it you'll see like all of a sudden it becomes really easy to like feel his grace on an easy decision like do we stay at this place do we stay at this place do we go with this designer do we go with this designer do we you know whatever it is Um, it I think it's really important to just not forget that and remind yourself of that. Um, Because busy is always going to be there. It's always going to be busy, (laughs) you know? Um, And it's important for you to be, like, to know that your peace is still here in the midst of the chaos. Um, And to pause and remind yourself of that and know that it's okay to pause. Like, in the busy, it's actually one of the most valuable things to do when you can just step back and pause for a second and recenter. Otherwise, you'll be a mess <laughs> flying around. That's, I learned that the hard way as well. But, yeah. Anyways. Well, I think that's about it. I think it's about time. Thanks, guys. It was great. Thank you.